Uh, we're from uh, Bethel Evangelical Church. We're just really across the road and down there a little bit. And we come out here today to ask some big questions and to perhaps intrigue you with thoughts that you may have considered but never found the answers for. And I'm going to put a question up here on the board. It's a very big question. It's a, one of those questions that many people think about, they consider, but they don't always find the answer to. And, and I'd like to invite you to interact with me. Feel free to tell me what you think. We, we love dialogue. But I want you to consider this question that I have on the board. Here is the big question of the afternoon. Are you good enough to go to heaven? Are you good enough to go to heaven? Now there's the big question. And I've had opportunity to ask people that question all around the world. And you know what most people say? If I went to them and said, do you think you're good enough to get to heaven? The vast majority answer and say, oh, I hope so. I hope I'm good enough to get to heaven. And when you say, I hope so, and perhaps that's your answer, I hope so. When you say, I hope so, the implication is, you're not sure. You're not sure. So I want to ask you that today. Are you good enough to go to heaven? Now, I'm going to full spoiler alert here. I failed this question. I am not good enough to go to heaven in and of my own strength. Not only am I an Australian, so that automatically disqualifies me, but I also have many issues in my life in that I have rebelled against God. Therefore, I, in and of myself, am not, are not good enough to get to heaven. But I want to suggest to you that that's true of all people. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from, we like to think that we're good enough to get to heaven. But are we really? Are we really that good? I mean, how do we even judge that? If I was to say, let's test ourselves to see if you're good enough to get to heaven, what standard do we use? Do we look at the person next to us and say, hey, I'm better than you? In fact, I had a person here at the start of the day turn to her other half and say, I'm good, you're bad. And that's what we do, isn't it? We judge on the person next to us. Or perhaps you say, I'm a good person when compared to Adolf Hitler or Mr. Putin or someone like that. Perhaps you're good compared to the politicians we have. But that's not how we should judge ourselves for heaven. What we need is God's perfect standard and test ourselves by God's perfect standard to see if we're good enough to get to heaven. Now, God has given us a perfect standard. It's called the Ten Commandments. So I want to ask you, have you kept those commandments? You know, the Ten Commandments to say things like don't murder people, don't steal, don't covet, worship God alone. Have you kept those commandments? I know I haven't. But what about you? Are you good by God's perfect standard? And what we're going to do, we're going to test ourselves now here on the board. We're asking the question, are you good enough to go to heaven? And we're going to have a quick test from the Ten Commandments to see if you are a good person for heaven or perhaps bad enough for hell. Now here's commandment number nine. Commandment number nine says, do not tell lies. Always tell the truth. Here's the big question. How many lies have you told in your life? I can't count that high. Even if I take my shoes off, I can't count that high. You know, I have told so many lies, I don't know the number. Well, what about you? How many lies have you told in your life? God says, don't tell lies. Have you ever told a lie? Well, what about commandment number eight? Do not steal. Don't take things that don't belong to you. Now, I've noticed as I've walked around Lee Park, there's a little bit of security around. Now, why do we have so much security? Well, because people break that commandment, don't they? Don't steal, God says. Now, have you ever taken something that doesn't belong to you? You might say, oh, Josh, yeah, I've taken small things here or there. But you know what? The value doesn't really matter. If you take something that doesn't belong to you, that's a violation of God's commandment. Don't steal. You know, if I came to you, grabbed your wallet, and took 50p out, I'd be a thief. If I came along, found the richest person I could, took his wallet and took thousands of pounds out, I'd still be a thief. God says, don't steal. The value is not important. The truth is, we should not take things that don't belong to us. So we're asking the question, are you good enough to go to heaven? Well, God says, don't lie. How many lies have you told? God says, don't steal. How many times have you stolen? Now, here's another one of the commandments. This is every parent's 
favourite commandments. Commandment number five, honour your father and your mother. Every parent likes that commandment. My mum used to tell me that when I was a kid. This is the commandment you need to listen to. Obey your parents. We don't do that, do we? I mean, I've got kids of my own. I can guarantee you they break that commandment all the time. And I know they're listening to me at the moment. So yes, I'm aware that you break that commandment. But we do that, don't we? God says we should honour our parents, but we don't. But let's put another commandment up here. Do not murder. Have you murdered anyone? I always get nervous when someone comes along and goes, yeah. <laughs> Have you murdered? No, oh, not yet. Getting close. Well, we most of us say, no, we've never murdered anyone, at least not yet, that Australian who's getting close. But we, we don't murder people in general. That, that's not societal, society accepted, is it? We don't go around killing people. But did you know what? We, we shouldn't murder, that's right. But you know what? God doesn't judge us that way. You know, we often do this as humans, we shouldn't do this. We look at people and we judge them based on how they look. Perhaps you've done that today. You've seen someone walking along here in the town centre and you've judged them based on their looks. Maybe you've looked at me and you said, what a good looking Australian. Maybe that's how you're judging me. I accept that judgement. But you see, that's how we judge people, isn't it? We look at people, we judge them. But that's not how God judges. No, God looks at our heart. And God says, don't murder. There's the physical outside commandment. But then he says, if you have hatred, if you hate someone, then that's the same as murder by God's standard. So ladies and gentlemen, we're asking the question, are you good enough to go to heaven by God's standard? I'm not. What about you? God says, don't lie. How many lies have we told? God says, don't steal. How many times have you taken things that don't belong to you? God says, honour your parents. We don't. God says, don't hate because that's murder, but we hate people. Now let's say God said, all right, I'm going to judge you by those Ten Commandments. I'm going to judge you by my perfect standard. How would you go? I mean, imagine that. Imagine you rocked up before God. You stand in front of Him. God pulls out the Ten Commandments, starts working through them, and you say, guilty, 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 guilty. What would happen? You know, if we go to court in our society and you say, guilty, 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 there's a consequence, there's a punishment, isn't there? And it's the same with God. When we break God's law, we do that which is wrong, there's a punishment. And the Bible says the punishment for our sin is death and hell. You know, we like to think that we're good enough to go to heaven, but we're not. The Bible says none of us are good, we've all done wrong, we've all sinned, and there's a punishment for our sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The Bible talks about death in three ways. Physical death because of sin, spiritual death, that is we're cut off from God because of our sin, and eternal death in hell because of our sin. And that's terribly bad news for us. Because we all want to go to heaven, the problem is we can't get there on our own strength. We've all done that which is wrong. None of us are good by God's standard. So what hope do we have? What hope do we have? How do we get heaven? What hope can you have today here in Lee Park? How can you have your sin forgiven? How can you be made right with God and taken to heaven when you die? Well, it's not by what you do. It's not by who you are, as wonderful as you may be. No, it's by what Jesus and Jesus alone has done. You see, ladies and gentlemen, our sin proclaimed death and judgment upon us. But Jesus Christ in love entered into our existence. Jesus Christ is God Almighty in the flesh. He came down to where we lived. He walked the streets that we walked. He breathed the air that we breathed. And he came to this earth to rescue us. He came because he loves us. You see, our sin proclaimed judgment. Our sin proclaimed death. But Jesus Christ in love goes to the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. The sin that you committed, the sin that I committed, proclaimed judgment and death. But Jesus Christ in love goes to the cross. He dies for sinners. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. But God... 
demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but he loved us. And he sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sin. You see, ladies and gentlemen, our sin, our lying, our stealing, our disobeying of parents, our hatred, proclaim judgment and death. But Jesus Christ in love goes to the cross. He pays the penalty. He dies the death that we should die. He's crucified, dead and buried. But then he rises again the third day. And he defeats sin. He defeats death. And now Jesus Christ says to you, here today in Lee Park, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, if you would trust in Jesus, you would be completely forgiven. You'd be completely forgiven. In fact, the Bible says, in order to be forgiven, you must repent. That is, do a U-turn, turn from your sin, and turn and trust in Jesus. Trust in Jesus as someone jumping out of an aeroplane would trust in a parachute to save you. And that's what you need to do with Jesus. You need to turn and trust in him. So my question for you this afternoon on this Easter Saturday here in Lee Park is a simple question. But it's a question that has a massive impact. When will you repent and trust in Jesus? When will you do that? When will you ask Christ to forgive you of all your sin? You see, ladies and gentlemen, today Jesus Christ holds out his hand of forgiveness to you. And he says it doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. If you would trust in him, you would be forgiven. I don't know you. I don't know what you've done wrong, but God does. And God loves you. And God offers you forgiveness of sin today. But you must trust in Jesus who died and rose again. Would you do that today? I mean, what's stopping you today from trusting in Jesus? You might say, oh, I'll think about it when I'm older. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? It is but a vapour that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. You say, well, I'll go home and think about it and I'll put it on my to-do list and I'll get to it in the coming days. No, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Do not harden your heart if you hear his voice. Ladies and gentlemen, today God calls on you. No matter who you are, where you're from, and what you've done, he calls on you today to turn from your sin and trust in Jesus. Would you do that today? If you're here today in Lee Park and you say, you know what, I actually I do need to trust in Jesus, I need my sins forgiven, I want to go to heaven when you die, I die, come and chat to me afterwards, I'll be more than happy to show you from the Bible how you can know God and how you can be forgiven. But I also want to give a free gift today to anyone who wants to find out more about Jesus. You see, Jesus is the greatest gift ever, and Jesus has given a gift to humanity, he's given us the Bible, it's how he speaks to us. And I have here the biography of Jesus. It's the Gospel of John. It's the life story of Jesus. It talks of God's love for you. It talks about how you can be forgiven no matter what you've done. And I'd love to give you one of those free of charge. So feel free if you want to find out more about Jesus to take one from me, from the board over here or the table over there. We simply want you to know Jesus, the one who is the God who lived, died, rose again, and today offers forgiveness of sins if you trust in him. God bless you.